Hello everyone and welcome back to another Warno deck deep dive. This time featuring the division that we haven't covered in the longest time with the second Panzer Quanti. And the deck is still pretty meta. As always you can find deck code to this deck and my other decks in the description down below in my deck list. And if you don't want to miss any future deck deep dives or other videos consider leaving a subscription down below and if you want to help the channel consider leaving a like there right next to it and yeah let's jump into here into the second pencil command here and let's talk about the german workforce and we start in the logistics tab where we have the first out of six cvs so a bit on the low end but still enough to get you around the fuchs is a fast cv with a smoke that is pretty helpful the Iltus is nice as well, but the Fuchs is just as fast on the road and just slightly slower off-road. And it has the smoke and it has the survivability against artillery, which is really important uh, for units like this. So I prefer the Fuchs, even though you get one less availability. Uh, you have to buy it less often as well, because it just survived that, uh, that extra bit. Uh, then Unimog as a frontline re resupply. The MR13 can take a bit of damage, but it's way too slow in comparison to the Unimog. So, Unimog it is, and then we go with the Mancat 6x6 as the big supply for the artillery in the rear uh, that can help out there, or help out with bigger tank plops and resupply those. Really solid one for that job. And then we come to the infantry tab, which is a pretty strong one. We have a bit fewer units than usual, uh, because the slots are actually not as cheap as with other infantry units, because this is... The Panzer Grenadier Division mechanized, uh, it has pretty decent tank slots, but a bit weaker infantry slots than some other infantry division out there. Um, and it has also everything on veteran C here in my deck, on, on one vet, or on two vet with the Faltermakers, so the availability gets dropped by this a bit as well, since Sicherung has got nerfed quite a lot, so you just take the Jaegers instead nowadays. But uh, let's get here with the leader first. Pensacolandia Führer, not an Amater. Amater is a decent vehicle. It's not amazing, but it's decent. But you want to have these guys fast on the front line, fast reinforcing. And uh, the Pensacolandia leader over the others because it gets uh, pretty decent CQC weapons here with um, AA and a Panzerfaust. And it also has six hit points compared to the Jäger Führer, which helps out there as well, or the five of the Pioneer Führer. So it can survive a slight bit more as well. So that's why the Panzer Grenadier Führer here, whilst the Panzer Mega Führer is just a bit too expensive and has no utility, whilst yeah, just costing you so much extra for the forward deploy, I don't think that is really worth it. You usually don't want to win the game in the first five minutes as se uh, second Panzer Grenadier is, at least not reliably. So you don't need that. Uh, Falter Jaegers to come in on the front line to grab some important key positions together with the uh, Falter Mega. Paramilan 2 and the Falchemager Aufklärers that we get in the Recon tab. And yeah, those should not come on veterancy. Uh, yeah, those are just coming around here to uh, quickly grab some spots early on, make it annoying for the enemy to push in there with their Panzerfaust 3 and hold against enemy infantry if possible. They are not special forces, so they are not the best infantry on infantry that you could get out there. That's why I only take one card, uh, because usually you only want to use them in the opener. Later on, Jaegers and other infantry are just more cost-efficient, because you only get uh, eight men here, and you don't have ex any extra special over the Jaegers, whilst the Jaegers cost you 15 points less, and they have more in and the infantry firepower. Like, they have more rifles and more hit points, whilst being cheaper. The, the difference... In AT is big for the Vulture Mayors and the difference in forward deploy, but afterwards the Jaegers are just better. So we go with the Jaegers here. Panzer Grenadiers in Mahlers. Mahlers 1A3, so you can survive a bit more frontally. The 5 points difference here is absolutely worth it to the still decent 4, but the extra side armor can be really helpful for the Mahler 1A3 as well. So we go for that. The auto cannon on this thing can help. It's not amazing, but it can help. The Milan 1, same thing. And yeah, the 5 front line armor means that it will stay around for a good bit as well. The Panzer Grenadiers themselves still a bit annoying with only 5 hit points. But uh, yeah, they still are extra infantry that you can just chuck around and have around there whilst the martyrs help out. 
and then Jaegers and Pioneers and Pioneer Armbrust do the killing. With Pioneers and Pioneer Armbrust being your other 10-man squad. Uh, so big squads as well. Coming in the Transport Panzer Fuchs Milan. Which, with smoke and a Milan, is a decent AT ve vehicle. It has bad stealth, but it's still good for zoning. Uh, it can still annoy the enemy. You can still flank around it with its high speed. So, uh, still a really nice vehicle to have here. Uh, Transport Panzer Fuchs Milan. Really nice vehicle to have for these guys. Artillery, MR tents, and some smoke mortars. Smoke mortars for infantry pushes, MR tents for everything else. Uh, that's why you don't kind of don't need the Lars. Uh, they are not that great in 1v1s at the moment. They are still decent in 10v10s and so on, but and other team games. But MR tents do the job. You want to push them pretty close to the front line nowadays, and then they can annihilate anything standing still with a salvo or uh, of one or two of them and do the job quite fine so you need to don't need to get the other slots filled here at all tank slots are pretty filled as well you want to have all the Leo 2A3s you can get so and you want to upvet them so that they have a decent efficiency uh, so six Leo 2A3s as your core the Leo 1A1A1s as your uh, cheap kind of affordable mix between tank and IFV uh, that can help out uh, dealing with enemy light vehicles that can help out against enemy tanks with 17 pen on its max range decently as well but you don't want to rely on these in tank fights against other tanks they're just there to spot them and move around shoot at light vehicles shoot at infantry a bit and if need be shoot at enemy tanks Jaguar 2s as your strong long range AT weapon uh, where you have a lot of Milan 1s against the lighter arm stuff, but open fields against heavy tanks, you stop with this thing, as the Toad Coup is a fantastic long-range ATGM. So, yeah, strong point here of this division with this strong ATGM here as well. Jack of all trades, really. Solid tanks, solid infantry, solid artillery, solid logistics, recon tab, solid as well, but... Not quite top end in anything. Here in this at the infantry tab, for example, you lack um, infantry with GSR. Your infantry, your Falcher Mega of Carriers are decent as they have the strong AT. That's what you mostly use them for, just so that they can come in quickly, spot th stuff for you, and have a Panzer Faust 3 that hits things hard. The Mega of Carriers are your chunky squad that you want to push forward with your infantry pushes, with your tank pushes. That's what the Jaeger of Clarys are for. Fuchs Razid is here for the exceptional optics, so that you have something with really good radar to, and optics to just check an open field, and then looks one, A1s and uh, as your early quick auto cannon that can just roll around and shoot things. Very good optics on these things as well, helping out decently spotting things, especially with tank pushes. There you want to push a looks usually with the squad as well. AA, decent tap as well. Gephards nowadays, really solid against uh, helicopters, solid against aircraft, work fantastically together with the Airhawk because they usually get at least one damage on an aircraft flying close to them, meaning that the nine damage of the Airhawk are enough to finish off the plane. Uh, Fliegerfaust, good, cheap, really affordable anti-helicopter, and you get high numbers, even on the highest veterancy, you get pretty high numbers per card as, as they start at 12 availability, so... Upvetting them to 1 is absolutely go-to. You could even upvet them higher. And they have good anti-helicopter range. Like, this is the nice thing about the Fliegerfaust. It's bad accuracy, bad anti-aircraft range, but decent anti-helicopter range of 2,650. And that allows them to be a deterrence against anything helicopter-like. And you kind of want that for cheap sometimes, just around on the flank, and then get those guys in. They're easier to hide than a Gephardt or so, so you... Don't have to worry about them getting picked off as easily by enemy anti-tanks. Uh, so yeah, Fliegel Faust in buildings, in towns, and so on are a nice fill as well. And they cost next to nothing, so uh, yeah, slotting them in there is nice. Helicopter tab, nothing special here either. But the BO-105s are pretty decent, uh, and that tank this, uh, deterrence as well. 22 pen on this one, 24 on the 1A1s, but... We take the one that is a bit more available so that you can have a picket line behind your line and have them as an anti-breakthrough mechanic, basically, where you have them flying behind your lines and if the enemy pushes with tanks, 
and they don't push with AA next to it, or they you can't snipe the AA, then the tanks just can't move forward. And the 55 point unit can't stop a full on tank push because you, they just can't run into your 22 damage ATGMs and you stop them there. And that's how you want to use your BOs. They are not an offensive tool. You shouldn't use them really for hunting enemy uh, armor. They should just be there for if the enemy oversteps the welcome, you hit them and you let the enemy know. You can't pass here unless you jump through some hoops and put in some anti-air here around. And yeah, there that's how they are were historically used mostly as well as a defensive anti-breakthrough unit. Um, that's why it, they're pretty unarmored and yeah, still strong armed though with heavy hitting ATGMs. And yeah, six of them is a nice number to have. Air tap is pretty filled here, as it is a really strong air tap. We get tornadoes, we get F-16s. That's already a strong fighter complement. The F-16s nowadays have only four damage on each missile, so they are not as reliable killer anymore. But you still get six missiles, so if you get two of them, you still kill most things. And for that price, they're still fine. Uh, we use some seed here, as they can sometimes be helpful. You obviously could invest into even more hard hitters, but the Seven star aircraft that we have do the job already. The Tornado IDS AT, now that the Mavericks do 30 damage, is a really good killer with four missiles. The four missile number is quite nice now with the 30 damage on these big boys. And yeah, the accuracy on these are still not amazing, but they, they do the job. Mehrzweckwaffe is the best anti infantry killer in the game, and that is fantastic. And then the heavier GR3, if the enemy is under investing into AA, this thing can punish them so hard. It can one hit a lot of tanks, it can one hit anything else, and for 165 points that is still a bargain. They have been nerfed a bit in price, but they're still absolutely insane uh, in strength. So yeah, heavier GR3, uh, really nice unit to slot in there from time to time as well. And yeah, that gets you a pretty good air tap. Tornadoes all can help out in a pinch in an air fight as well so you can fill the air space and overwhelm the enemy in that regard as well if you want to get rid of something here i would say get rid of the metzweck waffle and then you can fill a, a three slot for example in tank tab if you want to get more infantry as this is relatively on the low end for an infantry tab like this uh, you can slot in into the infantry tab as well so yeah this is the deck weaknesses um, no anti-infantry helicopters and uh, no exceptional optics infantry. Your four deploy is not the strongest and the rest of the infantry also in general. Uh, not the best of its level, but everything solid. Strength, it is all around combined arms and one of the best there. It has forward deployment, it has tanks, it has IFVs, it has good artillery. Uh, like none of those are top of their class, but all of them are in the midfield or higher and that leaves you with one of the best combat arms decks in the game and a really enjoyable deck to play so yep yeah. thanks for watching guys have a nice day and see you next time